Kathy had gone into labor on a Wednesday, and on Sunday morning, they called an ambulance finally. The baby was dead, and they said Kathy would have been shortly. Bev Ulner has lost a grandchild to End Time Ministries. Her daughter Kathy is still alive, but she's lost her as well. Like other members of this group, Kathy has cut all ties with her parents. We received a letter from Kathy telling us that uh, she had given us all these years to change, and until we repent, we are to leave them alone. They are told that their parents and their families are enemies to them and enemies to their faith. Oh, this was not a good card, but we'll have to do it anyway. <laughs> Chuck and Sandy Huber spend as much time as they can with their four granddaughters. They have 13 other grandchildren they may never see. Their son and daughter, their spouses and children are also end timers. Son Barry was the first to get involved in the group. First we thought he was going to a Bible study, it can't be bad. But he was being uh, controlled, definitely controlled. He wasn't our son anymore. Then daughter Pam joined her brother. She changed overnight. I knew that our kids were in a cult group. I mean, it was, it was a cult. Reverend Jerry Smith confirmed that. I do think it's a cult. I think that uh, the, uh, the way in which they follow Charles Mead concerns me. For an individual to have that much power over the followers is a concern. Uh, I think when anyone has that kind of power, I worry about that. I think a lot of the reason he preaches the way he does is for control of other people. The Huber's relationship with their children has changed from time to time. Shortly after Barry and Pam got involved with the group, they stopped talking to their parents. My daughter called me. I think it was her third child, a boy. She said, I had a boy this morning. I says, well, who's this? She says, I'm Pam. Oh. So, you know, it just knocked the props out from under me. Uh, because up until then, they wouldn't have anything to do with this. But then Mead's teaching changed again. And the Hubers, once again, were cut off. Barry sat in this chair with his Bible and told us that he was going to explain the Bible to us. And if we didn't believe what he had to tell us, we were going to hell. Well, the conversation deteriorated from that point, and uh, they left saying they didn't want to have anything to do with us anymore. That was about two years ago, when the move to Florida began. Today, there are empty spots where Barry and Pam's pictures used to hang. This time, the Hubers don't think their children will ever welcome them back into their lives. They both left town and moved to Florida without a word from them. They just, they just packed up and left in. I'm sure that uh, they had no remorse about leaving us. Frankly, I can't take the pain that goes with contacting them because I know they would not want anything to do with us. They're moving into a relatively confined area. They're not having outside contact through TV or newspaper or any of the ways in which normal people have, most people have contact. They are being very isolated. And so the kind of critical judgment that you need in order to make decisions about how to live and what's appropriate and what isn't appropriate gets suspended. And the, the more contact, the less contact you have, the more you're susceptible to someone telling you what to do, and you doing it without question. I have a fear of um, that it could be another Jonestown. I, there, Mead is so paranoid that I have no idea what this irrational mind can do and will do. It's always dangerous when one man manipulates other people to the point that they forget the love of their family and the love of God. Whenever the person comes to believe that he or she is doing something in the name of God, the ordinary morality of the world, uh, where it's not appropriate to kill, it's not appropriate to, to destroy people in whatever way, is suspended. And you can do horrible things in the name of God. The people in Jonestown that went to Jonestown went there with much the same mindset that the people who've gone to Florida operate with.
They wanted to be perfect. They wanted to live above culture and society and create something that was new and better and good and different. And it's, it's the same kind of mindset. Do you see that as a possibility here? Yes. I do. I really, I'm more and more concerned that that might be a possibility. The Hubers and other parents of end time members share the same fears and the same pain. I'm angry most of the time about it. Because uh, it's so senseless. There's the love, but the love so often gets lost in the pain. It's there all the time. It's a grieving process that you never get through. Somebody dies in two, three years, the grieving process, if you're grieving properly, it's over and you still miss the people, but it's the, uh, the dull ache is gone. It doesn't go away with this. Still, if given the chance, parents whose children are awaiting the end would tell them the same thing. Tell them to please come home. I love you. Please come home. With photographer Bruce Gronzeth, I'm Jessica Armstrong, reporting for 30.